In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at using Photoshop's lighting effects to light a portrait photo inside of Photoshop. So last week I dropped a video on using lighting effects inside of Photoshop. The response was absolutely overwhelming. And a lot of the questions you guys asked me is, can you use this on a portrait photo? Absolutely. So we're going to relight a portrait inside of Photoshop right now. But I definitely encourage if you haven't seen part one, check it out right now where I show the basics of how lighting effects work, how to relight a barrel, add texture dimension to it, and also how to do a gel spotlight effect. All right, let's look at a portrait. So here's a photo that I took of Callan. All right, so just for fun, I'm going to copy the background, control J. And then what we're going to do is start with a fresh copy. Now we could clean all this stuff out in the background. I'm just not going to bother with it because I want to focus on the lighting effects. So in the last tutorial, I said I was going to make this one a little bit more advanced where we're going to go in and we're going to do some texture work. So I'm going to duplicate this layer again because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a texture channel. So what I want to do is really soften this photo. So we're going to go under the photo here. We're going to choose filter and we're going to go down to the blur, but we're going to go down to our smart blur. And what we want to do is we want to reduce all the detail. So we can play around with this quality. Let's go to medium. Normal mode is fine. Let's turn up the radius and we can see here. See that it goes soft. We, we almost want to make this look like a painting. So I'm going to turn that threshold up. So it just goes very, very soft everywhere. Maybe even go higher. Let me zoom out so I can see what this is going to look like. Yeah, so I'm just going to apply this once. Great, but now we want to soften it even more. Let's go back in again. Let's choose filter blur. Let's go back to our surface smart blur. Sorry, one more time. And let's apply that. Second time. So what we're doing is we're softening off the details but we're not losing any of our edges. Notice that the edges are still there and the details are soft. That's great. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna load this channel in. So what I wanna do is create an alpha channel from this. So Control A for select all, and now we wanna copy it to the clipboard. Control or Command C. So now we've copied it, and we wanna actually create a channel from this. So we're gonna go under the channels, and then we're gonna add a new channel. So just click the little plus here and we see a new alpha channel. An alpha channel is a place we can store and save transparency and selections and different things. But now we want to paste in what we copied. So hit control V and there's command V and it will paste it in. Control D will turn off the selection. So we'll always paste it in as a black and white. Alpha channels always work in black and white. And this is great. All we want to do is just keep these edges that we can use later. So what we're going to do is click on here on RGB and make sure we turn off alpha one. The other way to do that is just click up here on RGB and that will select those channels. Great. So let's go to the layers. We can throw that layer away. We no longer need it. And now we're going to work directly on our layer here. And before we go into our lighting effects, I just want to show you a couple of things because I know some people struggled last week saying it was grayed out. So there's a couple of criteria. If we go up into here and we go under image mode, you need to be in RGB mode. If it's in one of these other modes, choose RGB, and it has to be 8-bit. Now, for a while, Photoshop did support 16-bit in the lighting effects, but for some reason right now, it only supports 8-bit. So don't work in a 16-bit, convert it to 8 by just simply clicking on 8-bit channels, and then you should be good to go. Also, make sure a layer selected and not a layer mask, and now we can go into our lighting effects. So let's choose Filter. We're going to go under render and in lighting effects. So here we are in lighting effects. If you want to know more about how all of these work in detail, check out my previous tutorial. This one we're going to continue. And of course, we're going to talk about all the settings that are relevant for the image we're working on. So the first thing we want to do is go under the presets. And we're going to start with a very basic preset, which is the two o'clock spotlight. And there it is. Now let's analyze our image quickly. 
Let's just hide our spotlight by turning off the preview. And if you look at the photograph, notice that the light is coming from this side right now. So you definitely, even though we can enhance and we can change this lighting a little bit, you have to respect where it came from if you have directional lighting. And you can see, see the catch lights in the eyes. That's showing exactly where it's come from. That's why this side here is lit and in the shadows on the opposing sides. Now, don't worry, we're going to do some cool stuff with this. But just remember, when you set your key light, which is your main light right now, you want to go pretty much where you went. Now, if it was shot in a foggy day or it's a very flat photo, it doesn't matter. You can set your lighting wherever you want if there's no shadows in the photo. All right, so what we want to do is we're going to start here and let's continue. So we're going to turn on the preview. And now we can see the light. So what we need to do is adjust some things. First of all, let's get these colors to white. So I'm just going to click here. We're going to make that white. Let's click on here. Now make sure you drag it to the edge there. There we go. Okay, so we've removed any of the color influence. And when you probably start, it might not have any, but we'll pick up your previous adjustments. All right, so let's take this intensity down a little bit. And now we also want to take down the hot spot. The hot spot is this inner circle. If I zoom out, you can see what our spotlight is doing. There's that whole spotlight there. This is the area that's going to be illuminated. And this area here is the hot spot. Or the area that's going to just, if we turn up the intensity, watch what happens. See how the light comes from there? And this will cause things to blow out. So it's okay, you can put the hotspot a little bit on your subject, but you want to try and avoid it a little bit if you can. See how now I've got the that just kind of going outside of our model a little bit. All right, so let's take our intensity down a little bit. Just to the point here where it's not blowing out our image anymore. Now, sometimes you might want to change the size of that light if you feel like, wow, this is too big. But before we do, let's drop our ambience down. So the ambience is your overall lighting everywhere else. Let's make that really low. I'm going to say about there. So that's going to be the unlit version. And now we could probably push our intensity up a little bit more. There we go. That's looking nice. So let's go ahead and use our texture channel that we created. So if you go under texture, you'll see there's alpha one. That's the texture we created. Let's click on it. And now it loads this texture in and you can see right there it's set to one see as you increase this see what it does there it adds the texture from that channel now we don't want very much of it it's going to look stupid but if we just go one this is going to add a dimensionality to our picture and you'll see in a second here and what it also does is it unlocks these other features to work correctly so one of the things we're going to do is we can take our gloss we're going to turn that all the way to zero and then we're going to turn metallic all the way up. Now let's play around a little bit more. Just increasing this. That's good. I'm watching the detail here in the hat. I don't want to lose that detail. Let's adjust our ambience a little bit. Okay, let's go up under here under our colorize. And let's see what happens when we add a little bit of color. Let's go here. We're going to maybe go to the blue tones. And these are going to work with the texture channel. If you don't have that texture channel lit, these are not going to work correctly, just so you know. So we can adjust how much we want by adjusting that intensity. And of course, see how we can change the saturation of it? Going up is more saturation, down is less. Let's find just enough where we get just a little bit of blue light in there. And of course, if you prefer to use a warmer light, we can go to like, you know, an orange light here. Look at that. That's actually kind of nice too. Kind of like that. And let's click OK. Now let's just see if we can tweak this exposure under the colorize a little bit. Let's take that down just a touch. Take our intensity up. And I'm just trying to find a good balance between the two here. All right. That's looking pretty good. So if we preview this so far, this is what we had before. And this is what we have after. Notice we've got this nice warm kind of a light kind of just glowing into her here. Now, of course, we can change the size of that if you want to make it more targeted. I'm just zooming out there, by the way, just hitting the Alt or Option key in the scroll wheel. 
And of course, you can zoom in or out just clicking in here. All right, so let's make this just a little bit smaller. And let's go in here. And notice I'm just clicking on those points to change the shape. And I can click inside to move it. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit here. All right, maybe we can increase the size of our hotspot a little bit now. And I'm gonna take that intensity down just a little bit, just so we're seeing that detail once again. All right, so if we look at this now and we preview it before and after, we can see we've got this warm light hitting this side. Now, what if we wanted to add a second spotlight on the other side of the image to kind of counterbalance that? So we can go up here and see the different lights. We've got the option here for the different lights. We're gonna click on the spotlight. It's gonna create another one. Let's go on the edge here and we can rotate this around. And let's make it a little bit smaller. And what we wanna do is bring it up here. Let's make that hotspot smaller. And notice what that'll do, because we've got a harsh gradient. Look at this. See how it's a little bit harsh, we want to soften it. So let's make that hotspot really small. And see how we get this nice fall off there. Let's rotate it and pull it down a little bit. So we're kind of just hitting the edge of the hair there. All right. Now, if we want to make adjustments to these uh, ambience, the ambience is going to affect everything, not just the um, the light we're working with. Watch this, see how it affects the entire image. So we can make it more ambient light, which means the ambient light is just flooding it with light everywhere. Or we can reduce it a little bit. And so now it's gonna to start to look a little bit more moody and a little bit more dramatic. Okay, I'm kind of liking that. Let's go back to the other light though. And to change the lights, click on here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop that hotspot down a little bit smaller. I'm gonna pull the light back a little bit and increase the intensity. So what I'm looking for is to getting just a little bit more light, there we go. So we're hitting that light a little harder there, but we don't wanna blow this out. Now remember, this is what it looks like without the texture channel. And then when we add this texture channel, just one pixel, we want it as small as we can possibly get, just that one pixel it's gonna add a little bit of depth and dimensionality to the photograph. All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna click OK. And let's zoom in and have a look at the photo. So if we were to look at this, you know, without that and with it, we're getting pretty close now. So we're starting to get a little bit more, look how much detail and texture is kind of coming out in the hat there. All right, so what we wanna do now is we just wanna do a little bit of uh, fine tweaking here with some curves. So let's go up under our curves and now we just wanna set our overall contrast on this. So I'm gonna click on the quarter region and pull it down. And then we're gonna to go to the three quarter region and pull it up. This is gonna brighten the highlights. So see what we're doing, we're creating a little bit more contrast now into this photograph. Maybe that's a little much. And we can see how that's really just affecting that overall look. So before, just kind of very flat. And in here, we're starting to get some drama. Notice we've got some lights here. It looks like a backlight that's kind of hitting your hair. So what we're gonna do is let's add some LUTs just to do a little bit of color grading to finish this off. So we're gonna go up under here, under the adjustment layer, then we're gonna choose color lookup. And then we're gonna click here to load the LUTs. Let's go down, we've got some here. Let's grab this teal orange plus contrast. And we're gonna drop this down to about 10%. So we just hit the one key. We'll drop this down to 10%. See that? With the move tool selected, when you tap that, the one key will set it to 10%. The two key will make it 20%, 330. So we can go through here and just kind of look. So I'm looking at like 12% right now. Or you can just click here and you can add it how much of it you want. And I think that looks quite cool. So we're getting a very kind of a cinematic look to this. And so if we look at once again, there's our before and there's our after photograph. 
All right, guys, so there's the result of playing around with that lighting effects. As you can see, we can relight a portrait. Last week we did a barrel and we did some gel effects. Um, I've got one more up my sleeve, which I'm gonna do um, pretty soon. And that's gonna be using the texture channel for illustrative purposes, where we're gonna create very, very photorealistic looking textures. And I'm also gonna show you how to create the objects that I use in my photorealistic illustrations. So that one will be more advanced when we're really getting into the uh, texture channel. So this is kind of like dipping our toes in the texture channel and playing around a little bit with a more advanced one. Don't forget to check out last week's and next week's, which is coming soon. So anyway, guys, I'd love to know if this was interesting. If you learned anything new, let me know in the comments underneath. And so if you are new here to Photoshop Cafe, welcome. Consider hitting the subscribe button, become part of the cafe crew. And I put out a new tutorial every Tuesday. Make sure you turn on all the notifications so you're alerted when I upload that new tutorial. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.